Hey guys, I'm Alexei from Ace5 Studios and I'm here presenting for Maxon at the Motion Design Roadshow. I'm a Cinema 4D character artist. I do rigging, which is mostly what I do. Uh, I've done a whole bunch of stuff. I started my career making models and textures for games. You know, I was a kid, I used to love to you know, dig into games. Back then, games were pretty easy to open up. They were just a bunch of textures and models and a folder which was referenced. Now of these archive stuff you have now. And, you know, obviously the first thing I did was open some textures, drew some penises on them, and had a good time. <laughs> I slowly I got slightly more mature and older, and I figured out how to make custom models for games. You know, I used all kinds of stuff back then. I used to Rhino and Milkshape and 3D Max. And so I figured out how to start adding games to models, and that's kind of... And then I realized there's a place called DeviantArt where um, people would post their stuff. It was basically like Instagram of the day. And I started posting stuff and people started liking it and I was like, wow, I don't have to put these into games. I can just post this stuff and people dig it. And I started doing that and eventually I got uh, someone offered me a job. They're like, some designer was like, hey, I got a drawing of an MP3 player. Can you make this in 3D? And I'm like, I can't. And then he sent me 200 bucks via PayPal and I was like, no way. And that's how I became a 3D artist. Yep, that was the whole story. As it, time went on, I worked in some studios in Sydney, Australia, and I worked in some studios in New York. But most of my career has been pretty much remote. I've just always been online. I've always just put stuff on the internet and people have contacted me to get me to do stuff. I apply for jobs sometimes, but I don't recommend it as the best way to do it. If you want to find out how to get jobs online as a freelancer, go read my article on my website. It's ace5studios.com. There's a business section in the tutorials page. Um, it's basically just boils down to drink with people once I guess this coronavirus thing is over, uh, make friends and make a lot of stuff. Like if you can't, if you don't like drinking, um, making friends is a bit slower, but make a lot of stuff and post it. That's the best way to get, you gotta produce enough content so people see stuff that they wanna make. Like um, I remember once I had a client who asked me to make a parrot for them. And the only reason they did this was because I had some parrots in my portfolio. If I didn't post, and I wasn't a really, it was a pretty simple picture, but um, if it wasn't there, they wouldn't have asked me to do that job. So that's very important is make a lot of stuff. You have to make, because if people haven't seen you doing this stuff, you don't, they don't know that you can do it. And how are they gonna hire you if that's the case? <sighs> Breath. Um, so, uh, today I'm gonna talk about rigging. Let's have a look at my reel. Basically, this is what I do. That's what I do. But I'm gonna talk about a much more basic level of rigging because doing that stuff is kind of hard. And uh, rigging is useful not only when you make characters, rigging is basically hooking up uh, one object to control many other objects. And I'm gonna do it on the example of a chair because, and a little seating arrangement later, because uh, it's important to get your head around the basic concepts of how to do this stuff. And then you can attach that to any other parameters in Cinema 4D. Like what I love about Cinema 4D is that everything is connected and everything is very um, intuitive, at least in my brain. Like uh, I've used a lot of software and I always try new software when I learn stuff. And it's just like Cinema 40 has this object manager, which just has everything in your scene and it's all there, there's nothing missing. Um, there's sometimes it's hard to figure out what Expresso is connected to, but you can just click on the object and then you can see which parameters are being connected to. And it's all there. Like in other software, you'll have like an outliner which lists all the object but you don't know what materials are applied to it, you don't know what it's parented to, you don't know if it's parented, and this, 
there's like you know you have to open like different graphs and you have to you know dig through this stuff to figure out whereas in cinema it's all just it's like a layer manager in photoshop you know it's just it's all there it's super convenient that's why i always come back to it like it's just so much faster to build things and just the the fact that she nests things and you know they will reference each other it's beautiful and today i'm going to talk about espresso which is basically uh, how easy, like a very basic introduction to Espresso. So if you're, and you should watch this because it'll save you so much time when you're building things for your clients. Because like sometimes a client will ask you to change, like if you make this chair and the client comes back and is like, yeah, my client or the art director said that we need to make it taller and skinnier and we don't, you know, and you start scaling everything, you start moving stuff and you realize that this doesn't fit. So you have to remodel something. And, and the idea of rigging is you build dynamic things where you have a controller which lets you change the height and the height changes the legs and the placement of stuff and it's just it all kind of hooks up together and that's what i'm going to be talking about um, also if you are interested in character rigs i make character rigs which you can buy for cinema 4d you can use them in your own projects and your animations i also have a pack of um, arms and legs which you can use to build your own characters that's kind of a big part of what i do and yeah, so let's go. Let's go have a look at the chair, Rick. Okay, so let's get started with Espresso, which I think is an essential part of rigging and making things interactive in Cinema 4D. Like, it. I think it's a pretty important thing to understand in order to build dependencies where one object can make other objects do stuff. So let's start with a parametric object called a cylinder. Now, parametric means it's a dynamic object uh, created with programming, which lets the user set human understandable things. So for example, here you can set stuff like the radius and the height, and you can change the number of segments, but you can't access, for example, you can't directly click on the polygons and change them um, because this is an object which is just basically using code and using these kind of variables to tell it what it's gonna be. So let's bring this, you can scroll over just any of these fields that bring them to three is fine. And uh, let's start controlling this with Espresso. We're gonna build a little controller, which is gonna be similar to what we have here, but it's gonna be, have more uh, abilities because right now you can click this and this one brings it in and out and this one brings it up and down. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make one controller which can do both. And it's also going to be controlling a lot of other stuff later on. Why don't we work? So let's make a little cube. It's a big cube. Let's just move it accidentally. Let's scale it down. And let's move it over here. As you can see, if you click this little triangle here, you just move it in two axes. So the first thing we do is we're going to right click on this and we're going to go to programming tags and Espresso. If your menu looks a bit different because using an older version of cinema, just press shift FC and type in Espresso with the object selected and it should come up. So this is our Espresso dialog. Let's dialog. Let's attach it down here and let's do the first thing. Let's drag our cylinder in here and our cube. Now, if we want to add some parameters, we can click and drag and increase these. For example, with a cylinder, I want to control the height and the radius. And with a cube, I want to use its position. So position, this one is Y, because you can see that over down here, when I move it, the Y position changes and it's X position. You can also see the red thing is X here and you could, you know, figure out that the red is X. The way you move it, basically you see the X moves there. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our um, coordinate tab here. We're going to drag our X coordinates into here and our Y coordinates into here. Now it's important to drag these little letters and not the P at the beginning, because then you see it highlights the whole object and it will drag a general position instead of just the X. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this guy's X position control the radius. So let's just drag this position into the radius and see what happens. Okay, we see a little bit of movement. Let's go to display here, let's turn out lines so we can see stuff a bit clearer. And as you can see, when we move this guy, the radius changes. So good, we got some progress. Up and down doesn't do anything yet. So now let's drag the Y into the height. And okay, that's kind of odd, that's not really what we want. 
And the thing you notice is because the height is not calculated from here to here, although this is the wide distance because the wide distance is calculated from this floor plane. Uh, the height is actually calculated from its the center and then it goes in both directions. So what we actually want to do is we want to multiply uh, this guy's position by two in order to get the right height. And to do that, we're going to introduce you the first node in Expresso, which is very simple. It's just called a math node. Just type this little X pool and search little thing and go math and just math add and drag it in here. Now, and right now this is set to add, but you can set it to multiply or subtract or any of the regular math things. And I'm going to multiply. I'm going to type two. And here now, so position Y, we're going to drag this into the top input because as you can see, and it'll disappear here. So now you just have input two. So we're going to have whatever Y is multiplied by two and then feed it back into the height. And you can see that thing gets broken. And now we have what we wanted. See, now we have one controller to control its height and its width. Handy, right? Now, uh, also an important thing to kind of which could help you here is a result node. I find this useful to just keep this here because you can plug anything into it. And I'll tell you, for example, right now this is 15 and this one is 31 because it's multiplied by two and this one is 60. Sometimes when you can't find why something isn't working or why something's going wrong, it's useful to get the result node in and just see which every output, what number it's giving you. So now that we have this, um, the next step is we want to get this little kind of back thing on top. So let's make another cube. Let's call this actually, let's get some names. Cushion. And as you see, it updates here as well. And this is the uh, cube controller. Actually, let's just, yeah, um, just to make it easier. I usually name controls comp plus, but in this case, we're going to use, we're going to leave it here. Also, um, see how the cube here is like sitting on it. I want the cube to actually be a bit higher up. I want it to leave some distance. So we're going to add another math node. Drag it in here. We can also control drag nodes to copy them. And we're going to move it out here. And we're going to use the subtract to subtract maybe. So input one will be this output here that we're getting. And we're going to subtract maybe like 10 and drag this into the height. See, now it's a bit lower than the cube. So maybe 10, maybe let's increase this too. There you go. So now the cube is always kind of a bit above. And we can actually, we don't have to use this for this one. Maybe we can use it for the, ah, it doesn't matter. This is good enough. Oh, we can even make it a bit smaller. So, and we can also select the cube here and go basic and turn this display color to on and change this to something visible like pick. There you go. So the next step is we want a little circle and we want the backing of the of the cushion. So as you can see, when we try to when I try to grab this, this doesn't work anymore because it's linked to this cube's position. So let's make a circle. It's a bit too big. Let's scale it down. And let's change it here in object mode. Let's change it from XY to XZ. There you go. And move this guy up. Now, what we're going to do with this guy, let's maybe scale him down a bit more, is we want to sweep a cube along this guy to make a back. So we want to deform a cube along it. So let's make a cube. Scale's a bit smaller. Move him up. And we're going to give him a bunch of segments in the Z direction. And then we're going to go to deformers and holding the shift key, we're going to go spline wrap. And see this arrow right now, it's pointing in the wrong direction. We want it to point along these curves. So let's change this to plus Z. There you go. And now let's drag this circle into the spline field here. Okay, as you can see, that's kind of <laughs> makes it into a cube because we only have four divisions here. If we increase the amount of divisions, we can see it goes all the way around the spline. So it loops in like a donut. Um, but the handy thing is here, spline wrap, we don't need to go to from zero to 100. We can go and make it zero to 50 because we only want it halfway. And now maybe we have too many of these divisions. So let's drag them down a bit. Now, the thing is, your cube is actually still here. Like, um, if you turn up the deformer, you'll see the cubes here. You still have these orange boxes, which you can control. So if you drag them out, you can affect the cube's dimensions. You can't affect the length because it's, you know, it's controlled by the, um, by the spline. Um, but we'll get to that in a bit. 
so we have this back um, and let's add a little bevel to it. Let's get the cube here and let's go fillet. And as you can see, we have this kind of, if we increase the size of it, for example, to, you'll see we get a slant here, which isn't really attractive. That's because the cube is very short and it's being stretched along the spline. If we make the cube longer, then it's no longer being stretched. See, because we have the cube selected here and we can drag its controllers to drag it out. So that kind of fixes that problem. And you can see the deformer cage, this purple box, it automatically adapts to the size of the cube. So we've got that problem done. Now, um, I want this cube, the circle, to move together with this controller. So we want I want the circle to move together with the cushion size. So in our expressor here, we have a cushion. And the, see how the radius here is on the input side? We can also drag the radius onto the output side. So by dragging this red box. And now we can drag the circle into the expresso, and then the circle can also drag the radius in. And we just feed this radius into that radius. And as you can see, make sure your cube is underneath the circle, like not inside, but below, because it first looks at the spline. And now when we move this cube, you will see that the circle spline also changes radius. So the back of it now matches the size of this cushion. And this is basically what expresso lets you do. And let's go a bit deeper into it, because right now you'll see that the back of the chair cushion actually falls over the edge, but we want it to be exactly on the edge. So for example, when we, let's name this back cushion. So when we change the width of this, we want it to stay inside the overall radius of the cushion. So let's go back into our espresso. Let's drag our back cushion in here. And first let's grab this length. So this length is the size X. And let's drag this into here. And make sure you're dragging this X again, not the size, because if you drag in the size, it'll drag in the whole thing, and that's that'll be incorrect. If we drag the whole one, see, it'll say just size, and that's that won't work in your setup. You can double-click to remove these. And you can control-double-click on any of these to, if they're squashed up, you can control-double-click, and it'll expand it to show you all the parameters. Now, so you back cushion here. We want this to affect the size of the radius. So let's get another math note. And we want, so we want this radius here. We want it to be a bit smaller than the radius of the cushion. And how much smaller is determined by the width of this cube. So let's drag this into the top field and the size X into the bottom cube field. As you can see now, if we grab our, it's not uh, because we have to also feed this into the radius. Now it's making it too big because the radius is still set to add. We want it to be subtract. And as you can see, that's really not what we want. Um, because see, it's going too far in. And now we're like, well, why, why is this happening? You know, what's causing this problem? And, uh, while I can tell you exactly what's causing it, but this is a good point for the result node to come in. So let's drag this guy over here. Let's unconnect this. And so we have the size in here, which is 32. And we have a size of this guy which is 63, and you see, wow, that's like half. That's not the right size. And then you realize that actually the this size is the whole cube. What we want is we want the offset to be just half of this. So for that, we're going to actually need another maths, math node. So we can just copy and drag this one if you want and just go here, uh, divide, and put two in here and drag this into here to the top one and then drag this into radius. And again, we're having... <laughs> Some slight problem. Okay, so let's drag this guy into here. What's the problem? Ah, of course, because the divide shouldn't be here. The divide should be all the way out back here. So this guy, we're dividing the X by two and we're feeding it into our subtract because we want to send only half the X to subtract. And then we want to drag this guy into the radius. There we go. And now when we drag our little pink controller, you can see it lines up to the edge pretty well. <laughs> so you get, we get the back, the X size of the cube from here, because we can control it. Oops, wrong cube. This cube. We can control this. So, and it also adjusts the size of it depending on where it is. So this is very useful for making cameras and you know, shutters and all kinds of stuff. So it offsets it by half of that height. And then we subtract it from the radius of this cushion. So this is the cushion radius. And we subtract from that, we subtract half of the cube uh, height. And then we feed that into the radius of our circle spline. 
Now, the next thing we want to do is we also want to make sure that when this guy moves up and down, that this circle follows it. So it's a very similar concept. Again, we have our circle. And this time, let's select the circle here. We want its coordinates and we want its y coordinate, the y position. Let's drag that in here. I think it's already set to 23 here. And how are we going to, how are we going to get our y position? What are we going to, information are we going to pull? Well, it's pretty simple. We just want the height of this cushion plus half the height of the cube. So we've got our cushion object tab here and we get our height to feed it out. So we want to add this plus we want the back cushion height. So where is our back cushion? And we want this, this height. So size Y. So we drag the Y into our existing back cushion node here. And then we just add a math add node and we drag this into here and we drag this into here. Move this out of the way a bit. And now when we move this, nothing happens. Oh yeah, because we should probably drag this into the position Y. Now, as you can see, it's offset a bit too much. Again, that's because we forgot to divide everything by two. Because the height of this guy is only half the height because we're going from the zero coordinates here. So we should divide that by two. And we already have this candy little node here, which is dividing stuff by two. So just control drag it, drag this into here and drag this into here. Actually, this will be, this is the back cushion height because again, we want it to be halfway. And then let's copy it again and drag this height into here because this is the height of the bottom cushion and drag this into here. And there we go. And now when we move this, that thing sticks to it. See, and this already looks pretty complicated, right? But it's just simple divide by two, add two, really nothing complicated here. And we're just feeding this into the position, into the Y height of that circle. So that's really all you need to do. Oof. <laughs> I hope you're still with me. Now for a reference, let's also get this guy and let's add, give him some caps and let's get some fillet so that he's a bit softer there. And again, we can feed this stuff into anything, anything, basically pretty much anything you see in one of these object parameters, you can feed into, you can both use that information and you can uh, uh, pull other numbers into it. Now, I also want a controller to be able to control this guy's um, distance here because I want it to be able to control that easily depending on what kind of chair I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this cube here and I'm going to just copy and paste it. I'm going to delete this expresso tag from here and call this cube controller 2. And this guy's going to be a child of a cube controller. So now you can notice that its coordinates are all zeroed out. If we take it out of the cube, you can see this is its world coordinates because it's going to looking at zero zero in the axis of the whole world. But if you put it as a child, its coordinate system changes to whoever the parent is. So since it's a copy right now, it's exactly underneath the cube. So if we move it out, you'll see it changes 35 centimeters, but not from the start of the world, 35 centimeters just from this cube that is its parent because it's a child of it right now. So let's just make this guy a bit smaller. Maybe let's change the color to yellow. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this cube's location in the X coordinates to control the sweep of this guy. So let's drag, let's, we can all do this in one expresso tag. You can do it in separate expresso tags if you want. It depends on your project. So let's drag our cube controller two and let's get our spline wrap in here. And for the spline wrap, I want to control our two coordinate. And for our cube controller two, I want to take its coordinates and its X coordinate. And if I just drag this into here right now, it's going to be uh, not super useful because it's basically using for right now, it's using a percentage and a percentage zero to 100 is basically like zero to one in all other numbers. So basically every one unit it's doing is doing a hundred percent rotation. That's why it's going all berserk. So to fix that, this really nice node is basically the other most used node that I use. It's called a range mapper. Let's drag this guy in here. And basically here, let's see, we have this yellow cube going from zero. So this is its, like X is zero. And let's say our to here is 51. So we want this range mapper to control from zero, which is input lower, to 50. And we want the result to be zero to one, which is fine because it's zero to 100%. 
So let's drag this X into here and let's drag this guy into the two field. And now we get what we want, right? We can control it. But also the thing that I'm not quite getting here is I also, I want it to be always centered. I don't want it to be like, I want this to always be at the back of the chair. So if this here is the front, I want this one to always be centered on the back. So also easy thing to do. Let's get our spline wrap and let's check out in our object field. What we can use here, we can use the offset. I think that's probably the easiest one to use. So let's just go offset is going to be equal to half of this thing. So let's drag our offset in here. Where is it? Offset. And let's get our, we have a math divide here by two. So we can just copy and paste this thing here. And we can actually just use the range mapper here. We don't, we can use the same one. We just drag this into the top one. So this will be divided by two then drag it into the offset. And not quite what we want. Let's see how it works. Nope. Maybe we need to divide by two. Um, maybe we need a different, the offset is drag. Let's get another math node and multiply it by negative one. So control drag this guy and multiply. I think we're going to multiply it by negative one because it's probably needs to go in the opposite direction. There you go. See now it opens and closes. And right now it's kind of going to the left, but we can just fix that by getting our circle and just rotating it into the direction that we want. 90 degrees. Hold the shift key after you start rotating it to make it snap. And now this guy, we can move him. There you go. So basically we have this guy, which we can control the height with. And this little yellow guy, which we can control how much it comes out. See, that's kind of all the power of Expresso that you really need. And if we have to click on this guy here and we can actually still, we have the, these controllers of the kind of the original cube, which was without it being deformed. And we can also make it higher or lower. And so we've got all this control here. Now, the next thing I want to do is let's make some legs. And as with everything else, I want them to be dynamic. I want them to be controllable so you can art direct it very easily and maybe even animate this stuff. So let's make a null and move it out here. And this null, I already have a null here. Anyway, this null here. And let's go to object here and change this to sphere. So that's the right size null. And let's control drag it, just grabbing this little red triangle down. So this will be our kind of the path that our leg will take. So let's call this top, mid, and bottom. Now in MoGraph, we have this wonderful thing called a tracer object. Now, right now I just put the bottom one because it was selected. Let's drag our mid in here and our top. Make sure they're in the right order. Now, if we, right now, it doesn't seem to be connecting them because what it does is it just traces their location. So if we press play and then we move this guy, you'll see there's a tracer thing around it. So let's stop it. Let's do undo, put it back where it was. What we want here is we actually want not trace paths. We want connect all objects. See, and now we get this nice little spline. And right now it's a straight spline. What we want is we want to scroll down here and we're going to change this from linear to B spline. And we want intermediate points to uniform. There we go. And now we have this nice smooth spline. And when we change, move the controllers, we can change the leg shape. And we can actually say mid, we can control copy mid one and make sure you drag this mid one between the mid and the top. And now if you move this guy, you now have a bit more controllers to get the shape that you want of the leg. And now this tracer is basically just a spline generator. So it's like any spline you have in here. So holding the Alt key, we click and drag on the subdivision surface to select and create a sweep. Not that one here. Um, we want a sweep nerve. If it's not in here automatically, just drag the trace into the sweep nerve. And then we want to make an end gun. And the reason we make an end gun instead of a circle, sorry, end side is because it's easy to control how detailed you want the mesh to be. So let's drag this guy here underneath the tracer. Nope. Above the tracer. There you go. And if we want to make it smoother, we just increase the just amount of sides and we can scale it down. So basically we have these legs now. This one leg. So let's move this leg up to here. Let's move this controller up to here as well. And this one we can move down here. We can also re I think we're going to reduce the size of the sand gun. There we go. 
And as you can see, we can very easily control how we want this leg to work. Now, the next step, the sweep, uh, we want to actually make a couple of these around here. So let's hold in the old key. Uh, let's make a cloner. And in the cloner, it won't show up because right now it's kind of looking at these guys and making sure all the clones are copying these guys. We want to switch this from instance to render instance. Now you have a whole bunch of legs and change this from grid to radial and change your radius down to zero. And there we have it now. So we have the legs and we can change the amount of legs we have here and we can control one of them and they'll all control. Um, as if this grid is getting in your way, you can always go to display, no options and just go turn off the um, filter, there you go. turn off the work plane, there you go. So now we have these fancy legs and don't forget this is all still controllable with Expressor. Um, for example, this cloner, how many legs do we have? We have five. We can make it three or two and we can, we can connect this to any other parameter on this object. So for example, we can say that the radius of this guy, so the bigger he is, the more legs there will be. So just here we get our cube controller, wherever it is, it's still here, right? Let's drag this out. Let's just drag our cloner into here, cloner here and count, drag it in. And then let's make a range mapper. So we have the position X, we'll control how far it is. So um, the further it is, so for example, X to, I don't know, from zero to 50, we'll create zero to, I don't know, just put a random number zero to 20 legs and drag this into the count. It's too much. So maybe let's reduce this to six. There you go. Maybe increase this distance to 83 or something. And now when we drag this pink, we're making it bigger, but we're also making the amount of legs higher. So it's kind of, you have this control to connect anything you want to almost anything else. And that's super handy because, you know, when it's just very convenient, like it's to build things that are easily adjustable. And, you know, if your client says you want to change something, you can change it and it'll, it'll propagate all the way through. Like right now we can very easily change the height and the shape of this without having to adjust each object separately. So if we make this cushion higher, it means everything just moves along with it. You don't have to go back in and change the height of this other cushion. And then this, uh, the placement of this circle that you use to spawn it and stuff like that. And don't forget, we can also do some simple pairing, for example, uh, parenting. So for example, we have this, uh, let's make a new null. So and let's call this our chair top, chair top group or whatever. And we can drag our, let's drag this guy down here and let's put our circle and our cushions. Let's put them all into here. So now when we select this, it will all move together. And I didn't press Alt G because Alt G, because I wanted to create this null in exactly zero, zero coordinates. So it doesn't break all our expressor that we set up. Because if you just press Alt G, sometimes it'll make the null in a different place and then it'll break all your measurements because these objects will be looking at a different world origin. Remember how I told you how this cube is uh, zero here? Well, that would be the same problem that you would have if you just pressed Alt G, you might offset some stuff. So anyway, so we have this chair group and we move it. But I also wanted to move the, I want the legs to grow with it. So we get our top guy, and we just drag it in here. And now when we move it, you'll see, that maybe even get our mid one and drag it in here. And now when we drag this chair top, no, that's the wrong one. We want mid one in there. There you go. And it don't move it side to side because these are instances. Uh, but yeah, so now you can move, change the height of the chair and you can adjust your, where the legs are. And it's just, you know, it's so much control and so much dynamic kind of. And let's turn off this calculator here so we can manually adjust our clone and we can just make these things. And, you know, it's just so much power <laughs> in your hands. Um, so there we have it. Now, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is I want to just do a quick demonstration of how we can also use this to build like a little couch or an airport seat. So let's make a new scene. Um, let's make a cube and this guy, we can make him editable and just 
in the polygon mode. Let's add a little cut here. Let's select our face, control drag it up. So we have our little chair and that's going to be our little seat cushion kind of type thing. Seat. And we can make a little cube here and move this guy here. And we can control this guy and we call this start and we call this end and let's put some espresso on this guy and let's drag our start in here and our end in here and i'm going to show you another useful node um i'm going to show you a distance node which is pretty much what you expect so let's type in distance and drag this in here and to get this guy what you need is for your start you need to go to coordinates and you need to drag the p not each individual one you need to drag the whole p in here so it's the whole position, not just the position on the X or the Y. And then for the end one as well, you do the same thing. You drag that into here. And we feed these guys into here. Input one, input two. And just for good measure, let's get a result node. And drag that in here and drag this into the result node. So now you can see the distance between these two cubes. And you know, this guy is about 200 because the default cube is 200 centimeters. So this makes sense. This is the distance that's between them. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use this distance between these two cubes to control how many times this guy gets copied. So let's go to Alt and put this guy into a cloner. And let's the, change the cloner object to linear and change this from Y to zero to X to 50 or something. Nope, to Z50. Yep, maybe increase it a bit. There you go. So we're going to control um, the amount of clones by the distance between these two cubes. It's because I want to be able to move this cube out and have more clones. So let's get our cloner and drag him in here. And how we do that is we basically um, do a couple. We do the count divided by the size of the chair, right? So we have his distance, which is 700, and the size of the chair is about 200. Or in this case, it's going to be 210 because that's how far they are with this gap. So we get our cloner, we, because we want to control the count, so we drag that in here. And we also might want to have another cloner because this will be controlling. Actually, now we don't. Yeah. We could feed, basically, we can just drag this Z out, but we're not going to use this because we're going to feed a Z. Ah, for now, just let's use this to make it easier. So we're going to basically divide the distance by the Z number. So let's get our trusty math node and divide. So we're going to divide this distance of these between these two cubes by the distance between these each cloner. And this should give us a value like 3.3. And this is good because if we increase it, we get four, five, six. Now the problem here is that um, the count here will only get the smaller numbers. If you drag it in into here, you'll have 3.3 will equal to three. So if we drag it out, it'll, it'll kind of spawn them in, which is good because now if we get our cloner and we, for example, increase this distance, see, it'll they start disappearing as they don't fit. So this way we can basically make this little kind of dynamic, uh, airplane, uh, airport seating, or a couch, or whatever it is. The only last thing you want to do is you want to figure out how to also fit um, like a, something on an end. So if we, for example, make another cube, and let's, so it's like the end of the couch, right? The one here, control copy in this one here. And we want to control this guy's coordinates in the Z based on number of couch cushions multiplied by the distance, right? Pretty easy. We know how to do that already, so let's drag out. This is our end handle. So we know what it is, drag it in here. And we just get do the maths. So we want this Z coordinates, because we're in the blue one, so position Z. And we want it, because if we just parent it to our end cube, then it won't be really matching up to the end of the thing, right? So we don't want, we want this to be unparented. So let's get our cloner cloner here. We have our count. So we can just use the count from this one here. So object count. And we just multiplied by the Z. So let's get our math again. 
um, change this to multiply and drag the count multiplied by the Z. And let's feed this into here. And as you can see, there's a bit of an offset. That's because we actually, um, as you can see again, we have our world axis is here. So we have that half a unit offset. Um, we can fix that pretty easily by just moving the cloner so that it starts at zero. But we can also do a bit of maths to add it. It's not that hard. Um, but basically now if you see how it stays a consistent distance from the, from the chair, it doesn't follow this cube. Um, if you want to fix it, just let's do a bit of math. It's pretty easy. It's just half of this 200. So let's add math. Let's go divide by two. So this is two. This is divide. And drag this into here. To this first one. Oops, drag it in. And then we want to get another math. And we just want to subtract um, before we get this final distance. So we just want this guy into here and this guy into here. And we want to feed that into our final distance. And there you have it. Now, when you move the end cube controller, that thing matches exactly where it's meant to be. And that's basically what I want to talk about. It's just this kind of amazing usage of Expresso to build dynamic scenes. So when you're filling out a scene, you just build it once. And then if your client says, can we make all of these longer? And that's longer. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is how what we just learned there is applicable to this. Obviously, I'm not going to teach you how to make this, but I just want to demonstrate kind of a quick overview of the similar techniques that I use. So, for example, we have this controller here for the eyebrow. If I move it up, I get this movement. If I move it down, I get this movement. And if I move it side to side, I get this movement. As you can see here on the right, I have the pose morph tag, which if I move this left and right, this brow mid moves. And if I have move this up and down, then this brow L down moves. And if I move them together, yes, wavy little motion. And this is all controlled with a similar expresso setup. As you can see here, I just have the controller multiplies range mapper and pose morph. And it just feeds right in. And the mouth has a similar setup for left and right, but it's a bit more complex because it has a bunch more sliders and here's the espresso, slightly more stuff, just a bit, but it's still the same stuff. It's just range mappers, math nodes, and you know, the post morph. And I just drag the stuff in here, just like we did before. And then I make the X and Y position of this controller, move all the other stuff in the way I want. So it's just a slightly more complex version of that. And then it's some clever parenting, like, this guy, for example, also moves the whole mouth section up and down. And these controls are just stuck in there. They're not actually controlling, like they're not joints. This is all pose morphs. The only joint I have is for the jaw. And I have this controller, which I move up and down. And here, it's just this guy moving up and down through a range mapper, rotates the jaw joint. Because I didn't want to have a rotate on this, I just decided that it's easier to just move stuff around. So that's basically how my rig works. And you can buy this rig from ace5studios.com. Um, has a whole bunch of features on it. And yeah. Hey guys, you made it to the end. Well done. I am proud of you. That was a big thing and there was lots of espresso and you know, we managed to stick it all together and we got a little chair and a little stuff. And if you have any problems, make sure to reach out to me on social media or just through my website, it's ace5studios.com, my YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Twitter is the best way to reach me. Uh, if you want to have, if you have a question or something, just you know, tag me there. Um, also, uh, I'd like to just thank you all for actually watching this and turning up and to all to Dave and Matthias and Peggy and Heather for organizing all of this and all the Maxon developers who've made this amazing piece of software, which you know, has given me the life that I have. I mean, most of my professional career is based around Cinema 40. So I'm incredibly grateful for the work you've done. Keep up the good work. All of you, the developers, the marketers, the product managers, you, you're doing a great job there. So keep it up and hopefully I'll see you next year at the conference without all of this.